Welcome to the Everyday Psych Victims Project. Thank you for following us. We have more interview videos coming soon and a new website coming soon also. So like, share and subscribe. One of our followers from the Everyday Psych Victims Project, Thea, is about to read you her personal account of chemical lobotomy. This is hard for me to write as I, I have been cognitively impaired by psychiatry. My memory is not good anymore and it takes real effort to think and to, to write. I was born in 1969 in London, England, the second daughter of two professional parents. I was always very outgoing and creative and loved dancing, art, self-expression through fashion, music and writing. I also had a great curiosity about metaphysical things, starting with an interest in, astro in astrology around the age of 12, which developed into studying meditation, herbal medicines, crystals and the like. I studied display design and digital design at college and worked in the media industry and later in secondary schools, responsible for colourful displays of the students' work. I also had a great love of music and was a DJ on the radio and in pubs and clubs. I have two amazing children, a girl now 21 and a boy almost 12. I was aged 25 in 1995 when I first encountered psychiatry. This was the time when there was a phenomenon of very thin models in vogue such as Kate Moss. Unfortunately, I was influenced by this and started an extreme diet. I became very underweight and developed, developed a psychosis as a result. I was sectioned to the Maudsley Hospital for 28 days. During my section, when I was allowed to leave with my boyfriend, I became pregnant with my daughter. The psychosis was brief and although I had been administered drugs in the hospital, Perhaps because I was pregnant and it was less restrictive in those days, I was not kept on any drugs and made a full recovery. It wasn't until 19 years later that I next encountered psychiatry. It was spring 2014. A series of intense events collided at the same time. I had been practicing Kundalini Yoga and had a powerful spiritual awakening. My mother was dying. I was trying to purchase a property and got gazumped and was having problems with a bullying neighbour. All of these things at once caused a lot of stress and I again went into mania psychosis. I was sectioned. During my section I was restrained by five men and dragged into a bedroom where I had my skirt pulled up and my underwear pulled down and was forcibly injected with heavy twang tranquilizers. I also had a male nurse coming into the bathroom when I was naked in the shower and I found the staff there intimidating and unprofessional. I had property broken and lost. I was released after 25 days and was really traumatized for many months by the ordeal. I did not stay on medication. Spring 2015 and spring 2016, I again had mania. I think I was really sensitive to the change in seasons. I had intense spiritual experiences during these manias, and in other cultures it would be recognized as a shamanic experience. After the spring 2015 section, again for a month, I was made to go on the antipsychotic risperidone. At first it wasn't too bad, but gradually it started to impair my senses and I felt more and more cut off from feeling anything and quiet like I was trapped inside myself. It was a horrible feeling and then it started to interfere with my sleep. Respiridone started to cause insomnia, which got worse and worse. I would lie there at night and get rushes of cortisol, an adrenaline-producing hormone. The insomnia, which is listed in the side effects, became so severe that I was not sleeping at all. I began researching coming off these drugs, especially helped by the work of Will Hall and the Icarus Project and Monica Cassini and her website Beyond Meds. 
My pair coordinator and the psychiatrist were totally dismissive of the insomnia I was suffering and gave me sleep hygiene tips. This did not work well and I was begging to be helped to taper down from the risperidone. The medical people had no knowledge of drug withdrawal and said if I was insisting on stopping, I should just cold turkey. I did, and it was hell. I was given zopaclone and clonazepam or clonopin for sleep, but they only worked initially, and I was beginning to realize the danger and lies of psychiatry, and I realized I had to get off it all. During the time when I had complete insomnia whilst on the risperidone, I was so unwell that I could not take my son to school one day. For that, my care coordinator called in social services. During the withdrawal phase, I had to go and stay at my father's as I was totally bedridden and my son had to stay with his dad. The withdrawal was extremely difficult and although I returned home after a couple of weeks, It took months for my sleep to settle back down. In spring 2016, now diagnosed with bipolar 1, I had another mania. I was kept in hospital for longer than before, this time three months. In the third month of my section, they decided to change me from oral olanzapine and sodium valproate to depot injections of clopixol or zuclo. Penthixol. I was allowed home, but with a lot of pressure on me to stay on the depot. I was still well and bubbly when I came out, but after about a month and a half, started with withdrawing inside myself and did less and less until I took to my bed. I would just lie in bed all day, feeling so shut down. It became difficult to do anything, and my son's dad had to move in with us to look after us the psychiatrist said this is depression but I have had depression occasionally and it was not the same I lost my ability to cry tears which I have always been able to before he was keen to get me on more drugs a mood stabilizer sodium valproate which causes my hair to fall out and then lamotrigine and then lithium, which made me really jittery. I had been on the clopixol injections for six months when I developed akathisia, the inability to stay still. I knew I had to stop taking the injections, so I refused. When I came off the clopixol injections, the akathisia stopped, but I was still very subdued. From being on the injections, my IQ dropped considerably. I have anhedonia, an inability to feel pleasure in normally pleasurable activities. Also, an inability to feel sadness deeply or to cry. I lost my outgoing and engaging personality and was, still am, very mute. My memory is affected and I struggle to search for words. My dream recall was stopped. I can only sometimes remember a brief second or two of a dream. My enthusiasm and drive to do anything is deeply diminished. I used to be very driven and did a lot of sports and took good care of my home. Now I am just a disabled slob. My creativity is gone, along with my inner vision. I have lost all my friends bar one, as I don't have anything to say to to any anyone i have lost all original thought what was so scary is when i realized this is a permanent condition i am now in every day is a struggle to do just to do the most basic of things since all my motivation has gone i never even used to have a television but now i just passively watch programs on my phone or read trashy literature My body has gone to pot and is rapidly aging from lack of exercise and a bad diet. I can no longer cook nourishing meals as they are just too complicated. My children are really suffering from this as they have lost their dynamic mother. I no longer socialize with other mums, so my son rarely has interactions with other children. 
I'm also too ashamed to let anyone into my flat now, so his friends don't come round. I really believe the clopixol induced a chemical lobotomy on me. I wish I had had someone to tell me this was possible at the time, as I could have refused the injections on release from hospital. My family is beginning to resent me, as for most of the time I just sit around and do nothing. This is the antithesis of who I was, and I really loved life and interacting with people. It has stripped me of all dignity and made life not worth living. I believe psychiatry is extremely dangerous and uncaring. My psychiatrist refutes my experience of being damaged by the drugs, even though I am completely changed. He just says I am depressed and wants me to go on more drugs. I have not been on anything since stopping the clopixol in October 2016. However, they think I am on oral olanzapine, for which I am collecting prescriptions. They think the olanzapine, which I am not taking, has kept me well. I know I will never have mania again, as it is now impossible for me to go high. A life ruined, and that of my children by psychiatry. To add, I am now living on disability benefits as I am unable to work. 